Leeds United have just played against Bristol City and have managed to win the match in what was fairly controlled fashion. Ended 1-0 and I'm going to do a deep dive into everything that went well, everything that went less well, some of the events and ultimately what we have learned for the rest of the season going by. First up we have to talk about the team news and for the most part it's unchanged. Archie Gray's returned from injury but he only really missed the Plymouth match and Willie Nonto has come in for Dan James. The real toss up before the match was Nonto or Anthony and I think we made the right choice for reasons that will become obvious as we go through this video. Then we dive into the first half and it was a very high octane start, very end to end, very attritional where it was a matter of which team is going to make the fundamental error first. And to be honest, they had their chances as well. There was an early chance for Naki Wells when Ampadu slid in really well. And on that note, Naki Wells is such a hilariously championshipy player. I completely forgot he existed and I was happy for the period that he didn't in my mind. Then again, Somerville had a fantastic chance coming out from a corner. Brilliant counter-attack for Leeds United. Tried to dink the keeper and it didn't quite pay off. But this is one of the reasons that I keep saying that the Melier punch that a lot of people hate, is something that we need to do more often because this all came from a melee punch. Punched it to the edge of the box, their player picked it up, Somerville is pressing, they're not quite in control. They pass it back, Somerville keeps pressing and they make a mistake. That punch means that we were able to quickly counter and create a brilliant opportunity and if it would have led to a goal, people would be praising it a lot more, I think. In addition to that, something else I noticed in the first half was Somerville looked a little bit lazier when he was dropping in, he wasn't coming deep quite as often. Don't know whether that's a deliberate thing to keep him a little bit fresher, but it felt a lot of the time like Ruter was doing the defensive work for him sometimes, coming out to that left-hand side, but we'll have to keep an eye on that at points. And something interesting that I noted as well, the fullbacks tended to swap wings a little bit, which I thought was quite interesting. That's not something that you see very often, and it keeps your wingers thinking. If you've got fullbacks that can go absolutely anywhere, then your winger goes, where the hell is Junior Furpo gone? And now you're dealing with Archie Gray, who plays a completely different style of football. The issue throughout the first half, in my opinion, was that Bristol City were pressing really effectively, causing us some problems in the build-up, and we sort of dealt with that throughout the second half, which I will get into, but at the end of the day, we got the chances, and we weren't sharp enough in the final third. They did have some fantastic saves. Their goalkeeper had an absolute blinder. For example, the return chance, where their keeper just about saved it with the underside of his leg, and it managed to bounce over the bar. That one took me by surprise. In addition to that, we had another penalty shout, which was the one on Ruter, and I think the commentator had a little bit of a stinker on that one. It's the one where he basically said, at first, there's no contact there. And then he changed his mind and he said, well, Ruter's exaggerated that. He, he's not been hit hard enough for it to take his legs out. And then he exaggerated it even further to go, well, yeah, he might have taken his legs out, but Ruter fell a bit weird and exaggerated it. And it's like, if it's a foul, it's a foul. Ruter was clattered and it wasn't given, and that would have taken a hell of a lot of the stress out of that first half. And the thing is, a few minutes later, Bristol got a way softer foul on the edge of our box when Furpo just sort of like hand on shouldered someone, which is a foul, but they're both fouls. Give them both. Anyway, at that point we're at half time, and my notes at this point were that we should have been winning because we very much needed to be a sharper side. Finish our chances, win football matches. General rule of thumb. That's all we had to do. And if we would have stayed defensively compact, I think we would have been okay. A lot of the attacking stuff that we were doing was really promising. But sometimes it left us out of our shape, and that meant that they were able to counter with that Naki Wells one I mentioned a little bit earlier. By staying defensively solid, you give those attackers a foundation to build up, rather than adding more players to the attack and then potentially leaving holes for yourself. Then we moved into the second half, and before the incident that happened in a minute, I was just noting that Nonto and Rotero are very happy to float around. They were swapping places all the time because Nonto likes cutting in off that right, Rotero likes to float all across the pitch, and I quite like that with this three in behind Bamford. They're all happy to play anywhere across that front line, and that means that it's really unpredictable, centre-backs can't deal with it, full-backs can't deal with it, and it ultimately led to a goal for William Nonto, which was some very nice footwork to create the chance. It was a ball from, I think, Furpo, fired up the pitch to Bamford, who just sort of dummied it, all the way through to Nonto, who managed to trick a couple of players, fire the goal into the corner, and this was absolutely a goal that Nonto quite desperately needed. He needed his confidence up as high as it could be, because you can tell he'd been a little bit wobbly recently. The new contract thing is a positive, but he's still trying to sort of rehabilitate himself after the incidents in the summer. So him scoring a goal is absolutely huge. And it especially helps that he did it after that FA Cup match when a lot of people were slating him for not putting in the effort. He did really well here. Then they had another fantastic save, this one from Glenn Kamara, who we had a nice three on two 
where Somerville broke through, could have picked out Rutea, could have picked out Kamara, ended up picking Kamara, didn't quite pay off, but it shows that we are being relentless and that's what we need to do. We're in a position where clubs like Bristol City are potentially going to be minefields for us. We need every single win that we can get at this point in the season and being able to beat Bristol City is a must and being ruthless and finishing games off is what we have to do and we had the chances to do that in this game. It was another brilliant stop, it was another counter-attack from a corner and that's what we need to keep on doing. And then we had more Somerville chances because our press was working a lot better in the second half and Somerville was winning the ball from their fullback so we're being a little bit too lazy. There was a lot that we could have done in that game a little bit better and that's primarily the finishing. But from a defensive point of view, from a pressing point of view, they had nothing in terms of shots and they had very little in terms of build-up in the second half because we learned from what went wrong in the first and we adapted and we built. And admittedly we scored very early in the second half which meant that they had to sort of change the way they played, but they didn't press us as well, which I think is very good for us. Then some very nice footwork from Archie, and this was the point at which Bristol City were getting a little bit desperate, making fouls here, there, and everywhere, trying to break us down and stop us playing the football that we want to. And Gruev, I noted, was doing a hell of a lot of hard work in this game. No matter what you think about him, He's, what, four or five million pounds? And he puts in the hard yards every single time he plays. And you can see that on his face. No matter where the ball is, if it's loose in midfield, Grove will be there. Occasionally you'll get Kamara doing sort of the nice, clean, gentle stuff. But the dirty work is almost entirely Glenn Kamara so far. Especially when he's on the pitch. And that is something that, like, you cannot value enough in a football team. Then we had a nice save from Melier. And it's, to be fair, not easy to stay switched on in a match like this because they barely had shots on target. But at this point, it felt like our energy was sort of slipping. Bristol City were growing into the game. And then I think I might have cursed Bristol City because after this, I've got Somerville having another chance, but he might be cursed to never score a goal again because this match he could have had four or five if he was a little bit luckier. This was where some nice one-touch stuff opened up a defence. It was, again, it was Rutter with clever footwork. It was Somerville with clever footwork playing nice little one-twos with him. That attack could pull apart any defence in the Championship and most of the ones in the Premier League, so if we get promoted, I'm very excited to see what we can do. Then the substitution started. Anthony came on for Nonto, Byram came on for Kamara, and that pushed Gray into midfield, which very interested to see, but it was done with about five minutes left. For some reason, Piru came on for Somerville with about two minutes of added time left, but by that point, the game was effectively done. 1-0 to Leeds United, and we've learned a lot of lessons from this. We've learned that we can trust the side to just shut up shop when we're leading and at the same time still create those chances. Bristol City had nothing going forwards. A couple of opportunities from corners, yes, but they were very easily dealt with and that's what I was a little bit worried about going into the match. They scored their goal against us in the first match from a set piece. In this one I was worried they get one chance and they put it away but Melier dealt with it perfectly well when they had shots on target and when they didn't from corners it was because our defence was absolutely effective in sweeping them up. Game management perfect, attacking very good, created lots and lots of chances, didn't finish as many as we could have done, this could have been 4 or 5 nil if we were a little bit luckier, but yeah, ultimately a good match, 3 points, puts us 2nd place in the league, all the other teams below us have a couple of games in hand, but that puts the pressure on them. They really need to start paying attention now, and they need to not drop any points, because we are now firmly back in the conversation. And that's fantastic. It's the first time all season, sorry, I accidentally punched the mic. The first time all season we have been in the top two and I'm going to stop punching this mic. It's now on a mic arm rather than just like standing on my desk, which means it's quite hard to keep control of. Um, but yeah, let me know what you thought about the game in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe, even become a channel member if you particularly enjoyed this stuff. That'd be much appreciated and I will see you later. Also, I think the post video word to put in the comments this time, because I want to see how many of you watch all the way to the end. I'm going to go with Somerville, because he deserves something going his way this night, doesn't he? Terror.